Okay, so it's here. This might not look like much, but if you've ever gotten a review sample from Intel, then you'll know that there could be anything inside. Usually a CPU, but anyway. This, my friends, is one of our two Intel Xeon 2699 V3 processors. Now this was not easy to get because this is not your average run-of-the-mill consumer, you know, tops out at a thousand peasant dollars processor. No, this is a $4,500 chip. It has 18 cores. It supports hyper-threading for a total of 36 threads. It has 45 megabytes of cache. It has more cache than my first computer had RAM. My first computer that I owned for myself had RAM. It has more cache than that. And my server board isn't here for it yet, but I figure, what the hey? This is LGA 2011-3 right? Just like an X99 motherboard. The X99 motherboard listed as compatible, so I figured why don't we take her for a spin even though we can't fire up both of them and I'm gonna put it in an Asus X99 Deluxe and find out what this little puppy is capable of. So come along for the ride. The Ring Video Doorbell lets you see who's at the door and Really? Now? You're gonna open the door? Okay, well, whatever. I could have prevented him from doing that by locking my door and then going and seeing the video on my phone to see if I should let that guy in. All right, so the first step is to take that uh, wussy Core i7-5960X 8-core processor out of my test bench. Now, the first thing that stands out to me immediately about these suckers is the fact that even though they go in the same socket, you can actually see that the Xeon chip, look, my hands are shaky, I'm super stoked on this. Uh, you can see that the Xeon chip is significantly wider and it will actually overhang the socket a little bit compared to what the Core i7 chip did. Now this is for a very good reason because each of those physical cores uh, in the die down there is the same size as the eight that go in here but there's 18 of them, 18 cores. So they're gonna be spread out quite a bit more under the integrated heat spread or the metal piece on top. Now, one of the cool things about these Xeons is that, you know, you might go 18 cores, holy cow. Oh, we better put some new thermal compound on there. 18 cores, holy cow. How, you know, are they gonna cool that sucker? Well, because they have so many lower powered cores running at a lower voltage, and because the power density is so much lower, they're actually significantly easier to cool, and they will, it will, in theory, run cooler than our fewer high-powered cores. So uh, I am really stoked to see how our single 120 millimeter water cooler fares with this bad boy. Okay, now Xeons aren't really meant to be used with gaming memory. So we actually had Kingston for the, the dual processor server that we're building with this thing, right? We had Kingston provide 128 gigs. So that's eight, eight by 16 gig sticks of ECC DDR4 2133. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull our gaming memory out, but I'm not 100% sure if this board even supports ECC, so. Okay. Moment of truth time. Let's see if she boots. Oh, is this powered on? Oh, balls. Oh, here we go. That took a really long time. There it is, new CPU installed. 64 gigs of RAM, E5 2699V3 at 2.3 gigahertz. So, uh, yeah, I guess. All that's left now is boot into Windows. Check that out, CPU core voltage, 0.784 volts. Next to nothing. You're gonna miss the moment. It's installing driver software. Oh, that's just USB devices. Okay, I guess the CPU works already. Fine yeah, then. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe those. <laughs> Holy crap. Have you ever seen 18 threads and, or excuse me, 18 cores and 18 hyper-threaded virtual cores? 
in one place at one time. That is fantastic. There's our 45 megs of level three cache. There's our 18 by 256 kilobytes. Wow, this thing has multiple megabytes. So four and a half megs of level two cache. Never mind the, the level three cache. Memory is running in quad channel. Now, something I'm curious about is, I mean, obviously this chip is not designed for gaming, strictly speaking, but I wonder, will it support the regular unbuffered memory? Let's, uh, let's take a run at it, shall we? So since we're playing around anyway, uh, we're gonna boot her up with our quad channel kit, of course, our vengeance memory. And I'm just gonna see if like XMP memory works because I can't imagine why it would, but I also can't necessarily think of a reason why not. I mean, would Intel turn a feature off on the $4,500 processor? Uh, it boots. And if we go to advanced mode, XMP is an option. Oh, I don't think that's gonna work though. I don't know, let's, let's see. Uh, yeah. You know what? Okay, I'm gonna let it try. I don't think this is gonna work though. The way XMP works on the consumer grade chips is it'll actually run the CPU strap at 125 megahertz. Um, and then it's actually gonna run the base clock slightly out of spec. And I really don't think the Xeon is gonna like that. This boots, I'll be floored. I don't think it is, it's in a loop right now. It's not happy. Time to clear CMOS and restart. <laughs> you know what, let's do 2666 since that is a little bit of a, of a safer number. Oh, not happy. Let's go for default settings and that's it. Okay, so now that I'm booted up, I know the max turbo frequency for this chip is 3.5 gigahertz in a single threaded workload, which means in theory, you actually could game on the thing and there would be no disadvantage compared to running on a consumer chip. But what I don't know is that in spite of its 2.3 gigahertz base clock, what it will run at under a sustained all core load. So there's two things I wanna know. I wanna know what voltage it actually runs at when we're loading it. And I wanna know what frequency it actually runs at. So you can see turbo boost and speed step jumping around changing frequencies here. So let's start our IDA64 stability test. And then just for fun. 100% usage of 18 cores and 36 threads. So it looks like we're gonna get a multiplier of 24. Not bad, so it's a little bit higher, not much higher. It manages to turbo boost another, you know, 100 megahertz. But that's better than nothing. And the core voltage stays extremely low. So these are super low power cores. So I'm gonna go eat lunch and we'll come back and find out what these temps settle in at. All right, so this is actually better than I expected. It's been sitting here running for 28 minutes and our highest core is 51, 52 degrees, something like that. That is ridiculous. So let's overclock it. Now, I don't think we're gonna be able to do much. Xeons, straight up, do not allow you to change the multiplier. They're not consumer chips. They're not intended for that. So the only thing you can do on a Xeon is increase the base clock speed. Now we already saw what happened when we tried to run a different strap. So that's clearly not happening. We're not going to 125 base clock. So all we can really do is maybe we can get, you know, five megahertz more on the 100 megahertz stock base clock. But remember guys, five megahertz more is 5% to, to every clock speed we run at every boost level. So that could result in a significant performance improvement, especially when you multiply it by 18 cores. That's, that's like adding almost another core to the, to the chip. Look at that. 105 megahertz, we are now seeing, well, I guess we should, we should compare apples to apples. So let's run our stress test. 2.73 gigahertz. I'm rounding up a little bit. Come on, it's still impressive. On our 18 core processor, 
under full load. How very interesting. Now, obviously something like this is gonna need a longer stress test if you're gonna deploy it in any kind of environment. Um, and 105 megahertz, from my understanding, is actually pretty borderline. So we're gonna use, uh, we're actually gonna use ASUS's real bench in order to hit this bad boy and find out over a longer period of time if she's stable. So RealBench has two modes. One of them is a stress test mode and one is a benchmark mode. So let's go ahead and give her up to 16 gigs of RAM and start. All right, so RealBench, I thought it was still running for quite some time, but uh, the system actually locked up after about 14 minutes. So we're gonna dial this puppy back. Whoop. Let's say 103 megahertz. Let's try this again and find out if we can get her stable. Okay, so now we're booted up at 103 megahertz base clock. So let's do our eight hour stress test again and find out if this is stable. This will still give us a 3% improvement in frequency, which will, ah, but up, uh, hey, come back. Actually, oh, this is not the same kind of a workload. So you guys can see that even in a fairly multi-threaded workload, we're actually sitting at 2.88 gigahertz per core. Wow, so it's only in that synthetic IDA workload that the multiplier is only going to 24. That is really impressive. So it looks like our eight hour run actually did succeed, which means that we're stable for all intents and purposes at a 3% overclock on our Xeon. So now all that's left is to run a couple benchmarks and kind of see how it goes from there. So uh, those of you who are into Cinebench, why don't we go ahead and do a multi-threaded Cinebench R15 bench. <laughs> wow. That is incredible. I've watched this run a lot of times. I have never watched it run like that. Holy crap. So I think, is this your Xeon, Ed? 2.6 gigahertz, 12 core, 24 thread? Uh, 2.7. Okay, so this thing is double the performance of an X5650. It is two and a half times, like 2.3 times the performance of a 3930K in Cinebench, something that scales reasonably well. Now, let's run the single core benchmark because I wanna see how performance is actually scaling going from one to 18 cores. This one's gonna take a while. I don't think we're gonna film the whole thing. <laughs> see, this is, more, this is more like what I'm used to seeing. So we mentioned this before, but this is the Ring Video Doorbell. Basically what it does is it allows you to preview using video. It's got a 720p camera on your iOS or Android device who is coming to your door. So whoever it is that happens to be coming up the steps and knocking, or in this case actually ringing the bell, which is of course his cue, but he totally missed it. What? Oh, hi. I have a package for you, Linus. <laughs> Get inside and get to work. I thought this was gonna be my dual socket motherboard. Go, go, geez, anyway. The point is, it can be powered with your existing doorbell wiring, or it can use its 5200 milliamp hour internal battery, and it works over Wi-Fi. It's got motion detection, and is basically just a way of knowing who exactly it is without actually going outside or unlocking your door or whatever else the case may be. It's available for $199, and for $3 a month, you can actually archive the footage off of it for six months. So it's $30 a year if you buy a year at a time. So head over to the link that I've got posted below me if you want to learn more about the Ring Doorbell. All right, so here we go. Obviously, performance is a little bit lower, actually less than 18 times the performance. So you can see that what we lose in intercore communication and splitting up the project efficiency, we actually gain back and then a little bit with hyper-threading. So performance looks very promising. This is an extremely fast machine. Um, but I think 
That's pretty much it for today. I'd love for you guys to leave a comment and let me know if you'd like to see any other completely you know, different kinds of, of stuff with this thing. I already have some ideas. I'd love to see how it actually does in, in gaming workloads, for example. I'd love to see if we, can, if we can crack the top of some leaderboards based on that we're using processors that literally nobody has. So uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it sucked. And uh, leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated than that, preferably in our form, which is linked in the video description. Also linked in the video description, you can buy a cool t-shirt like this one. Give us a monthly contribution if you think what we're doing is awesome and we need more CPUs like this. Or even just change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code. Because if you bought a Xeon like that on Amazon with our affiliate code, that would help us a lot. Like a lot. So uh, thanks again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.